Hi everyone, I'm Dragon with you. So today we have the spooky festival event and uh, I would like to create two videos about it. The first one will be dedicated to what you probably want the fastest is actually the gifts, so the hidden treasure during the event. And also we'll talk about the furnace of salt, the optimal strategy for that. And the second part will be dedicated to how I plan to get this event uh, in brief. So we need to complete the quests, then we need to log in up to seven times. Then we need to spend a huge amount of emeralds uh, for a great frame. Next, spending energy up to 18,000. And uh, I would say just spend up to 150 every day, if you can afford that, spend up to the 200 offer every day if you can afford it. And the last day you can spam 200 offers if you still need that. About Outland, so the situation is pretty same. So you can open chests for 90 every day, every boss. That's how you get a nice amount of Outland chests every day. So 12 multiplied by seven, that's 84 chests, right? So it's kind of cheap. You stay here. And if you need more, then try the 200 offer and you will be nearer to the end. As for the souls, so as for the souls, we need 1000 souls, which is a huge amount. And uh, what was my plan? I planned just to go for the first is market. And the second is just my offers from the dolls, from daily bucks, etc. So get the random stuff which can generate you some souls first. Then you go to the shop and campaign and check what amount you have. So I plan like 100 every day, maybe 75 per day. I'll think about it. And we have more choices now to do that. Next we have the special invitation VIP up to 7th to get more coin. And uh, destroy evil minions. So up to... 1500 so that's the event also we have the new skins which arrived so that's the skins for chin mao faceless and mojo i play chin mao so i think that she really needs health because well i know she's a warrior and she kind of needs to ultimate as often as possible but she is really vulnerable to mages and that's why i needed something to fix and health can fix this problem partially Faceless with armor, I like this. It makes sense because he's a mage and mages are vulnerable usually to physical damage. And about Mojo, well, same story. So if you play Mojo, if you want him as a main character, then why not? Okay, so let's proceed. Obviously, we have the special bundle for your guild. And now let's talk about actually the Furnace of Souls. So at Furnace of Souls, uh, we have several important things. So first of all, we can go to get some souls here. And what I wanted to highlight, so check this out. We have the top battles. People can't get more than 50 per battle. Ob obviously, I also can do that. So you see that we have a team which was able to destroy 50 minions. That was really effective. The idea was pretty simple. So I just put all the team with Albus. And uh, then I thought, well, Kira is vulnerable. Let's protect and heal her. That's why I play Marcus here. And what I wanted to highlight. So Isaac looks bugged here. Yeah, I I'm not joking. Isaac really looks bugged. I'll show you exactly why. But then that's not the best strategy. So the best strategy is to play one hero with Albus, go forward and collect as many souls as possible. That's how you get more souls. So check this out. We have a tank, a healer, and a damage dealer. Next, I played a damage dealer, Hark, a tank, and a healer. And together, these three heroes scored more than the entire team. So actually, the idea is pretty simple. You go to one hero, pick a pet which looks more logical, and pick Albus as a damage dealer. Maybe for mages you can try Merlin, but Albus is still a great choice. And that's how you beat them. So just don't think too much. Enter this. Pick a hero. For example, I would like to check Chin Mao. Pick Albus as a pet. And let her fight. So 
to save your time, you can even go here, press skip, and uh, the calculation is here. So she managed to get 20 souls herself. Same we can do about Iris, same we can do about other characters. So I'll just show you what we can do with Amira because she's pretty new. And what we can do with Iris. So I would like to show you these two characters, their possibilities. They are kind of battle mages and both of them can clean up pretty nicely, I would say. So just for fun, let's see the fight of Amira and Iris. And we'll talk about them again sooner or later. So Amira deals a huge amount of magic damage. Also, she is able to buff the enemy team really hard, which makes her really effective. With mages, so she needs magic damage. And as you can see, she managed to just solo that wave. And most of the characters died at that wave because she has Oliver as pet. And well, Amira, Amira isn't weak, I would say. So yes, she is like a hero who trolls the enemy team, who tries her best to create some like catastrophe in the opponent. And still she soloed this and she collected 30 souls. Just like that. I'm not joking. So Amira isn't so bad. What about Iris? So with Iris we have pretty same story. We also can patronage her with Oliver in order for her to survive longer, get Albus. And Iris gets the vulnerable soul, which results in huge pure damage to the front line, to the front hero, actually. And also with Bitey she deals a nice amount of physical damage. So I would say if you play a physical team based on front damage, then I would really recommend you to play Iris because she needs physical penetration for her bitey and she also can go through super tanks. And if you play mages, then well, you can consider playing Amira because Amira really likes playing with other mages. If she is buffed, she can be terrible even at adventures. So I had problems, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so anyway, both Iris and Amira managed to go through this fourth wave where most of enemies are kind of hard and uh, many characters died there, so it's not super easy, I would say. And what do we see here? Well, they, still, they are still alive, probably because of all their patronage. We don't have any extra healers. We only have this fight. But as you can see, Iris, I don't think she can do it. Yeah, she can. Okay, so still a nice result, 25 souls. So that's why I would like to tell you, please use one by one. If you want to test a specific team to test its general effectiveness or something, then you can get like, okay, we collect a team, we check if uh, we score like it, and that's it. So Dante scores 25, if I remember correctly right 25 and that's how we get everything so i'll enter it a couple of times more we get everything done okay i'll just skip this fight and do it one more time for example crystal And here we go, so I completed everything. And as you can see, I still have most of my heroes available. So with this strategy, you are able to score a crazy amount of souls at day one without real trouble and get more candies and be better prepared for your guild war. So I still can fight and I already have all the rewards possible. Okay, so now let's talk about actually the quest. So the quest of getting extra rewards. Check this out. So we have a special little thing here near merchant, I guess. And uh, we need to choose which resource we need most. So I would say that the strength skin stones, agility skin stones, or intelligence are a nice choice. Anyway, if you need 100 souls before you finish the quest of 1000, then go for it. So you get something for the coin and you get the coin back. It makes sense, right? Otherwise, well, I would recommend either to get unique heroes from the soul stone chest for your main team, 
or get some artifacts. Chaos Particles is also a good choice, but it depends on what you need. So personally, I prefer red artifacts from orange artifacts. From orange artifacts, I really would like to get the unity of extreme because this artifact is terrible loot. It's super long to collect. And that's why I usually pick that for my Sebastian and other characters. So you really need a huge amount of time to collect. That's why I recommend it. About the violet ones, well, if you play at middle level, maybe you can get them. That's about the shop. So my preference is, is definitely artifacts, then maybe skin stones. And uh, if you need some heroes, then try hero soul stone chest. Now let's talk about the special things you need to collect during this. So first of all, Thesis at the Furnace of Souls, we press on it and we have one of sevens collected. Next we go to, I guess, campaign or to the tower, as you wish. So we go to the tower and uh, in the bottom or at the top we see this little thing. That's the second. Next we go to Titan Summoning Circle. And somewhere here we need to find a thing which is dedicated to our event. Here we go. So that's the thing near the farm. Next we go to the merchant. I guess not this one, but we still need him here. And you see the scandal. That's the fourth one. Next, we need to go to open artifact chests. Go to airship. Nothing happens here, so we need to open a chest first. Okay, not bad. And when we do it, we see a web, right? So not here, but here. So when we open the chest, that's a web we need to press on. Here we go. Okay. After that, we go to campaign. We need the Realm of Chaos chapter. So we search for Realm of Chaos. Here we go. And below the dragon, if I remember correctly, so you see this skeleton. Press on the skeleton. And finally, go to the ghosts. So you go to the ghosts and a flag of game with them. Your aim is to make them all disappear. So we will wait for the ghost to appear here. Then we press. And then we need uh, all the ghosts to fill the positions. And then they all disappear. So when you press on a location, the two nearby either appear or disappear. For example, I press on this ghost, you see that actually the opposite thing happened. So I can do same with here. If I need, I can do same here. Next, we probably try to collect everything here. Let's check what happened. So something like that. Our aim is to make all of them appear or disappear. So let's try to do it now. Somehow. And here we go. So all of them are here. So we press on them. That was I guess that was the last part. So all of them are present, right? And uh, that's what we needed to do. Okay, so now we need all of them to disappear. And I did something wrong. Sorry guys. Yeah, I did something wrong. Let them all appear. And now we need them to disappear. And here we go. So that's how you get 1500 candy. The second part is the, at the Furnace of Souls. I will not show you everything, but you just need to complete the puzzles. So you go to the candy, and we have Halloween puzzles which were present during previous years. You need to drag the item, and if it is near, then it is settled here. If you drag it into the wrong direction, you can still drag it, as you can see. So your main idea is to collect all the puzzles and get the second reward, so that you could be 
just the winner of the puzzles. The first is pretty simple, others will be harder and you need to collect them all. When you do it, well, you get the candy. That's it. Okay, so I hope my video was informative enough and now you can easily get what you planned, right? And next video will be about planning, it will be later. So good luck with the puzzles and see you in my next videos. Good luck to you.